Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem single number. We're given a non-empty array of integers nums and we're told that every single element in this array appears exactly twice except for one element and that element only appears a single time. Our goal is to find that number that only appears once and we have to implement our solution in linear time and we're not even allowed to use extra space. If we were allowed to use extra space, this problem would be really trivial if you know what a hash map is or actually even just a hash set, uh, because for every single value, uh, like the, the, suppose we had this input array, we'd take that two, add it to our hash set, so something like this, and then we'd see a second two, and then we would remove it from our hash set, because every element that appears twice is gonna be added to the hash set and then removed from it, except for that single value, like one, which is gonna be added to the hash set, but it's never gonna be removed. So by the time our algorithm finishes, we're only gonna have a single value in our hash set and that's the value that we're gonna return but the downside of this is in the worst case uh, we'd obviously iterate through the entire array which is big O of n time complexity but it's also big O of n memory complexity because we're using a hash set is there a way to do this solution without using any extra memory? Well, there definitely is a solution and let's try to figure it out using this example. I will say that the solution I'm about to show you is not really easy to figure out, but once you've seen it before, it's pretty easy to implement and recognize when you can use it. So suppose we had this input array and you'll see why I wrote it this way in a moment. So I'll just tell you that this solution does require bit manipulation. So I'm gonna take each of these values, show them in their binary representation. So four, for example, is gonna be one, zero, zero. Of course, there's gonna be some leading zeros, but we don't really care about those. One is gonna be represented like this. Two is gonna be represented like this. Okay, so this is the binary representation. And once again, I'll just tell you the solution. Basically, we're gonna use a binary operation called XOR or exclusive OR. And if you don't know this operation, basically what it does is if two uh, bits are the exact same, so zero uh, XOR zero is gonna equal zero. Also, uh, if they are the same, meaning they're both one, this is also gonna equal zero. But if they're different, so if we had one and zero, that's gonna be one. And if we had zero uh, XOR one, that's gonna be one as well. So if they're different, we get one. If they're the same, we get zero. And the solution to this problem is literally just taking all these input values, XOR them together, and then our result is going to be that single value. In this case, that single value is four. And if you just wanna know the solution to this problem, that's literally it, but it never satisfies me. So what I'm gonna do is actually explain a bit of the intuition behind it. And the simple answer is, that when you take two values, like two and two, and you XOR them together, of course they have the exact same binary representation. So if you XOR two values that are the exact same, of course you're gonna get zero, uh, all zeros in the output, because you know the bits here are the exact same, the bits here are the exact same, and they're gonna be the exact same. So if the bits are the same, we get zero in the output. And the reason that's important is because we know that there's two twos, right? So these are gonna cancel out. We know that there's two ones. These are gonna cancel out. So uh, we're gonna be left with only that single value and the order that you do the XOR operation in is not important. You can do it in any order and you're gonna get the same exact result. So that's the simple explanation. And I'll just talk for another minute about if you didn't know that XOR can be done in any order, could you still figure this out? What's the intuition behind it? Let me just talk about that for a minute. I'm not smart enough to figure it out just by looking at all of these bits, but we know that to simplify it, we can just look at a single column, right? just one of the positions. And like I said, we know that every value in the input is gonna be a duplicate except for that single number. So we're trying to prove that we know for sure that the bit in the output is going to be the same bit uh, that comes from that single number, which is right over here. We know for sure it's gonna be zero. How do we know that? So we're trying to prove that the output bit is always gonna be the bit that comes from the single value. How do we know that? Well, first I'm gonna to prove to you that this portion of the XOR operation is always going to evaluate to be zero. How do I know that? Because first of all, zeros in any XOR operation uh, don't change the result. That means if we had N and N could be either one or it could be zero, N XOR uh, zero is gonna equal N. That's pretty simple if you look at a couple examples. We could have one X or zero, that's gonna be one. We could have zero X or zero, that's also gonna be zero. 
So basically what I'm saying is we can ignore all of the zeros here. So I'm gonna scribble that out and scribble that out. So then we're gonna be left with a bunch of ones. How many ones are we gonna be left with? Well, it's guaranteed to be an even number of ones. I'm not counting this position, by the way. I'm only counting this portion. And we know it's gonna be an even number of ones because we have only duplicates here, right? It's either gonna be zero ones, or it's gonna be two ones, or it's gonna be four ones, et cetera, et cetera. And we know that duplicates always cancel out. One XOR one is always going to be zero. That pretty much shows that this entire thing is always gonna be zero. So, uh, so this is gonna be zero, right? And this is either gonna be a one or a zero, and whatever it happens to be is going to go exactly in the output, because like I showed a moment ago, N, X or with zero is always gonna be N, so that's gonna be this bit. And so basically what I showed you is not really a formal proof, but I showed you an intuitive proof for just one column, but of course we could apply that to every single column. So what we know is all of this is gonna be gone and this is going to be the output after we do X or, so we're gonna return the correct result for and we didn't use any extra memory. Now let's jump into the code. Now let's code it up and we are going to have a result and we're gonna initialize it to zero. Uh, and this is what we're gonna store our X or result in. The reason we're initializing it to zero is because like I mentioned, any value uh, N X or with zero is always gonna end up being N. So this is a good default value to set it to. And then we're just gonna go through every single value in nums, uh, take that N and X or it with the result and then set the result back equal to that. And then uh, once we've done that, we, uh, like I showed in the proof, we know for sure that the result has that single number that we're trying to return. So now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And yes, it does. As you can see on the left, it works and it's pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.